Well, happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm glad you've joined me for this devotion, and I hope you're looking forward to every opportunity God gives you today to speak a word for Jesus Christ and invite someone to church on Sunday. I decided I'd wear my uh, Getting Chucky in Kentucky uh, t-shirt for all of my friends and family back home in Kentucky. And if you don't know what Shucky beans are, you don't know what you've missed. And uh, if you don't know what they are, uh, look it up or ask somebody. I mean, they're good, especially at Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. Good old shucky beans. Anyway, today we're in the book of Ruth, chapter 2 for our devotion. And you remember yesterday, Ruth, I mean, not Ruth, but Naomi and her husband had moved from Bethlehem in Judea to Moab because of famine and drought. Uh, and while there, uh, her husband, Naomi's husband, dies. And their two sons, who each had married women from Moab during the 10 years or so they were living there, uh, her two sons died. And so as she's left as a widow with these two daughters-in-law, one of the daughters-in-law stays behind in Moab, while Naomi and Ruth, the other daughter-in-law, uh, move back to Bethlehem. And that's where we pick up the story in chapter 2. Ruth is out in the, the fields where grain is grown and being harvested, and she is gleaning uh, in the field of a wealthy man named Boaz, who is a relative of Naomi and her her husband's family, and um, what, what that was is was was an Old Testament form of welfare. When people harvested their crops, the uh, the uh, bits and pieces that fell on the ground, they were to leave. They were not to go through the harvest a second time and pick all of that up, and they were to leave the corners of their fields. And, and that was welfare so that uh, people who were poor, uh, people who were uh, transplants or indigent or immigrants, etc., they could go and they would have to go and physically pick up what had fallen on the ground, harvest from the corners. It was called gleaning. And, and that was to make sure they had food. So it was a welfare system. But it also, I think, in some ways protected the dignity of the, of the people who were hurting because they had to do some work as well to uh, to to get the food. They had to actually go out and 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 pick it up off the ground and glean it from the field. So uh, Ruth is doing that, and Boaz notices her. And I think there's two reasons. One, he didn't know who she was. She was new, and two, she was pretty. And so he notices her, and he he asks some of the people there, "Who is who is that?" And they they tell him it's Ruth, uh, Naomi's daughter-in-law, who had uh, moved from her home of Moab to Palestine to Bethlehem with uh, Naomi. And so um, he, Boaz, deliberately leaves grain in the field for her to pick up and throughout the day provides her water and food to eat and he protects her. He makes sure that nobody will abuse her or harm her in any way. So why did he do that? Well, it was more than he thought she was attractive. Look in chapter 2. At verses 10 through 12. Boaz, uh, verse 10. Then then she fell on her face. This is after they had started having a conversation. I mean, he's a wealthy man, a powerful man. And um, she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, to Boaz, Why have I found favor in your sight, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? She wasn't a Jew. She was from Moab. Verse 11, Boaz replied to her, all that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me. See, in, in, in their culture, women were very dependent on men. It was a dangerous world. It was a hard life. And when a husband died, it was up to the sons to take care of their mom. Well, both of her sons had died, so she was a widow without any living sons to care for her. And Ruth being devoted to her was extremely commendable. Remember, the other sister stayed behind with her family in, in Moab. And so Boaz says, uh, all that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me and how you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and came to a people that you did not previously know. Then he says, may the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. What Boaz is saying is that I know, others know, people know 
about how kind you are, about how good you have been to your mother-in-law, Naomi. Word has gotten around. Uh, That's still true today. When you are a good person and you do things that are good and you are kind, people notice. And when you're selfish, you're a jerk, and you're not kind, people notice. You know who who else notices? God. God notices. And and that's the reason Boaz here says, um, uh, may the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God, the God of Israel. Um, he said, I've noticed, everybody else has noticed. We we know the kind of good person, good woman you are. But guess what? So is God. And he's going to to reward you and bless you. I think one of the tragedies in life is that sometimes we miss out on blessings God has for us because in a moment we we refuse to be good. We chose not to be kind. God notices. People notice. And, 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 And we sometimes mistakenly think that only has to do with that moment. But that's not true. It has to do with the future. It is true that today has a huge impact on tomorrow. And that even in the spiritual world, quite often what we do today shapes what God does or does not do in our life in the future. Tomorrow's opportunities are shaped by today's obedience. Tomorrow's blessings can depend on today's faithfulness. People notice, so does God. That is a word to the wise. Be faithful in every moment. Be good and kind in every moment because you just never know who's watching what God wants to do in the future because you are well present. That's the word for today. I'll see you tomorrow as we continue this story of Ruth Naomi, Boaz, and